Ryan Day, I, I, I'm quite happy to admit this publicly, Ryan Day is probably my favorite coach that I've ever covered in any sport. And I, I cover a lot of different sports. Um, Ryan has a, a, a humanness to him. Um, humanity, I guess, is the right, the better, you know, more correct way to say it. But he, he has a, um, he has an aura about him that's approachable, that's professional, but that that makes you feel like he's, you know, you, you know, when you're talking to him, that you've got his attention. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, there's a lot of coaches that that's not the case. I was interested to see when we would see publicly whatever it is that Urban felt so strongly about when he essentially self-appointed Ryan to be the guy to take over the program. And last night, no, we've seen a few instances along the way. The Georgia game last year comes to mind. But I have never seen Ryan Day that fired up. And it made me wonder... Gee, I wonder if he's actually more like that behind closed doors that we just never see, that maybe he has an ability to let the temperature come down. And when he addresses reporters or when he talks publicly or when he's in public, that maybe he has the ability to dial that back a little bit. It was pretty obvious to me how personally he took all of the hate, not just from Lou Holtz, although certainly that he that he called you know Coach Holtz out. Um I I think Buckeye fans loved the fire, loved the energy, and it, it happened because of a win, so that was good too. I, I felt like I saw Urban in Ryan Day last night. And to so many people around the country, they're not going to like hearing that. To Ohio State fans, they've been dying for it. And I felt like mm-hmm. we finally got that last night. Yeah, and coaches are so good. The, the great ones are so good at turning that, being able to flip that switch. Right. They come to the media and they come, they're the face of the program. They're buttoned up. It's a lot of coach speak. It's a lot of, you know, the cliche things and, you know, making sure that they're the face of the program. And when they go behind the locker room doors, it's a whole different guy. I think you kind of maybe saw that not only with him yesterday, but you look at Dan Lanning in Oregon. They had that clip from the locker room there. And like you see their real personalities. Now we could have a conversation if there should be cameras in the locker room and whatnot. I think that's a different story. That's a song for another time. But because that's such a sacred place and those guys, you you know, you build such a relationship with your team and you're the leader of that team and they know your true personality. They know they they've seen that coach day. He's even said it the last couple of days of the week were really emotional for him. Um, and so you could feel that. Right. And it's like, hey, what were what was practice like? And only that only that group. Only this group of Ohio State players know exactly like, hey, this this is big to Coach Day. And when it's so cool, in my opinion, when that stuff leaks over like it did last night, um, because honestly, man, we want to see that true se- the the true self of those coaches. We want to see the true self of those players, right? When they get the opportunity to talk. And sometimes, you know, there's give and take there, right? Like, you know, you get a sound bite from somebody and, and people run with it, especially in our day and age where it's like you can clip stuff and it, it's all out of context and whatnot. But like the, seeing that from him last night, I thought was a really, really cool thing because you could see how much it meant to him for really the first time that he showed that type of emotion. And for me, it tells me what this team means to them because this is a little bit different of a challenge. Um, he doesn't have his, you know, it's not CJ Stroud stepping up for year two or Justin Fields stepping up for year two. Like this is a little bit of a challenge. You got a whole new offensive line, new quarterback, you know, you're trying to make this all mesh and it's hard, man. That's, this is a hard deal. Uh, and, and to see him react the way that he did after the biggest win that this program's had, in, well, I shouldn't say Ohio state, the biggest win of this year, um, was so cool. And it was so eye opening um, that he was able to show us that. And I loved it. I, I personally Really, really loved it. Um, and I know Ohio State fans did as well. Like my group texts were going crazy. I wasn't able to, I wasn't watching on TV. Obviously, I was there. So we were walking out of the stadium and obviously didn't have NBC on my phone or whatnot. And my group text lit up like, oh my gosh, we got our guy. Like this fires me up. Like all sorts of stuff um, for him. And I think it was really big to him because, right, there's a lot of question marks surrounding him this year after what's been going on the past couple of years. Um, and I think that was just so, so cool for us to see and all in Buckeye Nation to see as well. You know, I, I'm trying not to be too prisoner of the moment because you think back to, to 2020 and 
I mean, God, the, the season was just a cluster. Um, mm -hmm. But the win over Clemson was a big deal. Now, Ryan never had a moment where he went bananas post game. Um, but it was pretty obvious that, you know, from feeling like they got jobbed in 2019 in the Clemson game to, to, to basically saying, Hey, these guys are going to be good again next year. Cause Trevor Lawrence is still here. You know, we want Clemson. We're, we're going to work our way back to getting another crack at them and, and to bury him the way they did. I know that was really full circle for Ohio state. Um, but all of the handcuffing that season, you didn't even play Michigan. Some of the games that were COVID canceled, you had one hand tied behind your back playing Alabama and you got smoked in the national championship game. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the next two years, you lose at Oregon at home uh, in a frustrating game for sure. Joe Moorhead organized a great game for Oregon that night. You know, didn't play well in the second half against Michigan two years ago. And he even acknowledged that last night and saying, hey, look, that was not a not a good half, but it's the only bad half that I'm willing to acknowledge publicly, Ryan said, um, you know, from that Michigan game a couple years ago. Last year, a tough game. The scoreboard reflected a maybe a more lopsided loss than than what Ohio State, you know, internally felt. But obviously it was a bad loss to Michigan. Uh, and you know, you, you win the Rose bowl and it was awesome. God, that was a, an instant classic, but like it was an exhibition and, mm -hmm. and you had a couple guys opting out of the game and like your season wasn't hanging in the balance. So again, I, I don't think it's too prisoner of the moment to look at last night as a defining, truly defining moment in Ryan day's coaching career. It's very obviously a defining moment in Kyle McCord's playing career. Um, and it's the kind of thing that, for me, I think this team never lacked belief that they could go there and win and that they could go win a national championship this year. But there is an element of the proof is in the pudding. And when you know, hey, this is like the first big game of the year, right? Like, we're not gearing up for Indiana or really getting fired up to play Youngstown State or Western Kentucky. Some of that hype is, like, manufactured. When you know you're going to – go play a team like Notre Dame on the road and you got to go do it. And then you do in the fashion they did it. I think this is a springboard for this team because they got a good Maryland team coming in. I'm telling you right now, Penn state looks really good. Michigan mm -hmm. looks really good. Uh, Penn state might be the best team in the big 10 this year. Right now through four games, they embarrassed Iowa yesterday. So I think this can be a vindicating moment for an Ohio State team that's plenty capable of winning the Big Ten, but they got a couple of big tests still in front of them for sure. And Brendan, I don't know if you were able, if you watched this happen, but from my perspective, the not only the outpouring from Ryan Day at the end of the game, I thought was it was really cool, but the outpouring of the team um, after after the um, after Chip scored. Um, obviously, it's a big play. They would have reacted like crazy, you know, regardless. Uh, but it was it was awesome to see them just totally go crazy. And then after everything kind of settled down after the review and after the kick, they were still going, I mean, really crazy. They understood the moment. And you make a really good point about the vindication part of it. And it's really hard early in the year, especially for, for them, to play – in no disrespect, like three preseason games almost, and really start in, in continuing to have question marks, okay? Like not Indiana. I shouldn't say that about Indiana, but like, you know, Youngstown State, you're paying them to come to Columbus. Western Kentucky, you're paying them to come to Columbus, and you're paying them to, to kind of prep up for Notre Dame. And there were still a lot of questions, and, and that does seep into the players' minds. Like, hey, are we able – are we on this level? Are we on the level, the national level that we need to be? Um, and to see them prove it to themselves last night is awesome. You know, you take the coaches out of it. You take the storylines out of it. You know, you make it just purely football. And the 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 guys in the Ohio State – guys wearing the Ohio State Buckeyes uniforms last night now believe that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody because of the performance that they put on um, last night. And, and you could see them realize it at the end, and it was really cool to, to kind of watch that too.